Are you ready to get woke? So here's a question that just came to me, and I told him we should, we should, because uh, I think people have asked me this. No, I had it initially. Remember when we were at your house, I said, here's a couple of things we could make videos about and talk about. And then weeks go by and he's like, oh yeah, we should make a video about that. The, 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 the crystals told him that we should. Um, so, or spirit through crystal. But it's a, it's a valid question. And I've had people ask me this before and I think it's interesting. So the question was, should one have a, a master? Should one follow a lineage or a spiritual master on the road to spiritual enlightenment? So I have my thoughts on it, but let's see what this a-hole has to say. Because, you know, he's been following uh, Osho for many years, and uh, now he's all by himself. So what does he have to say? Well, I would rephrase the question for a start and say, do you need a master or not to be able to find out who you are? Sort of thing. And uh, I guess that was more the question because... Uh, if I remember right, in that moment when we came out with that story, is that you had an experience which was similar to my experience I had, which is called Samasati, right remembrance, like a glimpse into the beyond, so to speak. And uh, yours, I believe, was done without a master. I believe mine was closely related to Osho. I don't know, but, you know, that would be coincidence that in exactly in that time <laughs> this is happening. So, yeah, so that's the question. Do you need one or not? Now, if we could see us, I would say, no, you don't need one. And upon reflection, I believe there's a difference uh, in the aftermath and the understanding of the story. So how was your experience? Briefly, because we don't have much time today. And what happened after, really? Okay, well, that's interesting. I think I see where you're going with this. Um, well, my experience was a remembering of the ultimate truth that I am all that is. And so is everyone else. So it's not like I'm special. Everyone is God, including me and you and all life. Um, but after that, it was uh, still what's happening now. It's like you know, still being a person, but bringing that knowledge in. And um, it's, I mean, it's just changed everything, like how I am and how I behave and what I believe, how I treat people, I mean, everything, everything. Um, and it's just, in, it's just integrating it. And, uh, but, but fundamentally, I, I just don't feel like I'm, I'm seeking uh, as much anymore. I'm seeking in a different way, you know, I, I'm seeking more to, it's more about the integration because that was what I was looking for, to know who am I, and I got the answer. And it's more like a what. It's not really, It's not a person. It's just a, you know, it's everything. So, so yeah. So, for me, yeah. So, for me, the answer is not, like, for me, I had so many teachers. For me, to, uh, like, I had, I mean, every, every, like, the universe was my teacher. So, I would say God was probably my number one teacher because God, I realized only later when I started, listening that God was always guiding me all the way and I was just was too stupid and too not, just not paying attention. Once you start paying attention, you know, you're always being taught and led. But then so many beings I met in person, people, people like just normal people, experiences, spiritual teachers, uh, and then books, and then people on YouTube. I mean, just like all of it, but all of that is God anyway. So really, who is my teacher? God is my teacher. Um, yeah, there was no, there was no one, there was no one, you know, it's all, even any spiritual you teach, teacher, who, who is, who is, where is the teaching coming from? It's all God. Everything is God. It's just different flavors and different, uh, angles and different, you know, and what you're ready for when you need it, blah, blah, blah. But it's all, it's, it's, you know, but I would say, so yeah, for, for me, it was like so many teachers. Uh, and I would just say, if you want a teacher to help you just make sure that they're, um, Read power versus force so you can calibrate the level of consciousness of anyone and make sure they're coming from the right place and they're coming from the heart. And the number one warning sign that someone is not in integrity or not necessarily not in integrity but not coming from the highest would be that there's a lot of ego there um, because there's teachers around now that have access to high-level information and whatever. But, but yeah, yeah, but, they, but you can sense that they're, they're still an, e an ego is that they think they're so cool or whatever. And as soon as you feel that... Because in my experience, the more the more uh, the more I realize that I am all that is, 
the more Sasha just drops away and becomes irrelevant. And all that's left is this willingness to, this desire to help other beings remember the ultimate truth so that they too can be liberated. And that's actually my, my real desire now is to liberate other beings because I want people to have the peace that I feel most of the time when I don't allow the mind to come in. That's really my, my only um, wish. So if there's teachers out there and uh, they claim to be whatever, awake, or online, but really, you know, they just seem to be wanting lots of money or for you to think that they're cool or they want to whatever. Well, I would, I would question that anyway. So that, that's my thought. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I mean, a very important point about the thousand masters. Um, there's a beautiful story about that uh, in the Zen tradition. But uh, before I do forget, uh, yeah, so you did, no, okay, it's like a Zen master was asked by his students on his last days, like, who was your master? And he goes, like, I didn't have a master. I had thousands of masters. But let me tell you three, about three. You know, one, I came to a village very late at night, and um, there was no shelter, but I saw a man trying to get into a house. So I go, dear sir, where can I sleep? And he goes, well, you know, I'm a thief, but if you don't mind, you can sleep with me. And he was a very cheerful man, and I stayed with him for two months. And every night he would go out and say, oh, if God willing, you know, tonight I'll be successful. And every morning I go, was you successful? He goes, no, but tomorrow, you know. And I remembered him in my meditations when I was sitting for months and months and years and years and nothing happens, you know, like, ah, oh, be patient. The other one was a dog. I was at the river and it was really hot and the dog was thirsty and he came to the river, looked in the river and I saw his reflection, got really scared and ran away. That happened three, four times, you know, and then finally the dog was so thirsty that despite his fear, he jumped. So I learned, hey, you know, despite my fear, sometimes I need to jump, specifically if I want to find out who I'm not <laughs> so I can find out who I am. And the other one was a child, he came with a candle, I was standing at the mosque and uh, the ch I asked the child, did you lit the candle? And the child said, yeah. So I said, so where did the light come from? The child looked at me, looked at the candle, blew out the candle and said, where's the light now? And I understood that my arrogance doesn't get me anywhere. <laughs> So, yes, and so you were basically in that space of, like, you learn, we can learn from everything, and that's a beautiful way. I was lucky I had a master, because, uh, well, maybe stubborn, I needed a little bit harder, and uh, having a master around is actually really giving you the taste of something you know is there, but you have no clue where it is and what it is. <laughs> something like that makes sense? And suddenly you meet somebody where you go like, whoa. And there's an entrainment and you feel a difference. And that is very helpful to suddenly be and remember. Now, as you mentioned before, um, the challenge is who is a real master? Who really found? How do I find that out? And yes, ego is a very good story, very good signal. And uh, seriously, in the end, it's my awareness and my ability to discern and really see a person as it is and feel how I feel about this person and not being into like, oh, a master should look like this or should act like this or not act like this or any ideas we have. The real master is like, one sign I would say is, uh, well, okay, there's also a difference between a master and an enlightened being. There's many enlightened beings who are not masters. It's a different story, again. Story never ends. <laughs> um, you know, and it's a feeling, and it has nothing to do with the logical mind. And, uh, I just have to watch my mind, my expectations, and my ideas of how a master is supposed to be. Or my insecurity, and oh, this person knows. And then I do whatever that person is telling me, including killing myself. Uh, yeah, so it is a fine line because we all want to know and we all want to find out. And... Uh, As we can see right now, 
you know, Osha's one one of his saying was like, if in doubt, no. And it makes really sense because if I know and know, I know and know. Well, I should, <laughs> if there's a should. And I know a yes when there is a yes. But if I don't know neither a yes or a no, I definitely don't have a yes. So in this moment, I have a no. And... Uh, Where was I going? Well, don't if you're not sure. If you're not sure, don't say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But what was <laughs> I there before? I completely lost it. This is hilarious. Sometimes how life works out. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I can just rant until you get it back. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you're talking about uh, watching. Yeah, you got it. So. Thank you. <laughs> Since we know as the example of this dude here, who did not have a, s a master, we can reach. And it is a little more challenging, and we have to be a little bit more aware and a little bit more um, um, intense in our search. Um, but we don't need to just cling onto or jump onto the next best person who seems to be know what he's talking about. But mind you, another sign is they're talking about. You do not feel that. And yes, you would feel that. Specifically if you listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I really want to say that that's really true. I mean, there's, there's, I don't want to point people out. Um, But there are beings out there who are, you know, spiritual, whatever, teachers. And you can listen to them talk and you can really sense like, okay, they have a lot of information and obviously they've had some amazing experiences and blah, 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 blah. And I know they're speaking from a place of some, some truth and authenticity. But I'm not feeling the love coming from them and I'm not feeling the, 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 the peace and the bliss. So you can have knowledge and some wisdom but not really be rooted in the experience and when you really when you really awaken to the 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 ultimate truth of oneness there's a certain peace that is just there it just is and and there's a lot of love too you know there's a lot of love and when i see beings talking about you know spiritual stuff and spirituality but i don't sense a genuine compassion and a love emanating from them something is missing and usually the block is that there's there, there there's ego and um yeah and it's just you can really feel the vibration you can really feel the love and the peace and the bliss emanating off any being that's that's high, high level and i really and and you know I just encourage everyone to read Power Versus Force and learn how to do kinesiology because you can test the level of consciousness of any being. So if you're listening to someone and you're like, oh, this feels pretty good, I'm going to let you, you check them and you go, oh, 675, well, that's pretty high. You know, anything over 500 is is high and they're in a, they're in a state of love. And that's great, but if you test someone and you're like, ooh, 320, Okay, well, it's positive, but they're they're not. Yeah, yeah. One, I mean, apparent. I mean, it's funny. Uh, David Hawking talks about this that there's uh, there's entities that will come and teach information from other worlds and stuff, and they're coming in with stuff, and ooh, wow, it's another being from another world, so they must be so wise. And you test them, and they're 190, and you're like, oh, okay. So just because somebody is coming in from the other side doesn't mean they're high level, and just because somebody seems to have some information in their in a human body doesn't mean they're high level either. Amazing that you say that because th before this session uh, I was waiting for him, he needed to jump in the river. Um, I made a little short video about uh, how to prevent non-beneficial, we have a storm here, non-beneficial energies for entering for stuff like this, yeah, experiences. So yeah, this is a very important part, we don't know. So follow your gut, follow your heart, following the taste of love. And uh, that's always a good sign. We are both in a hurry, sort of thing. Um, but we will talk about this again because it's really... Well, we talk about a lot of things. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening in. Ciao. It's been a little short, mini woke, ranty, podcasty interview. It's been fun. Yeah. Hope that helped. And uh, see you later on the Woke as Fuck podcast. Peace.